Joining me in studio today, in studio is the key word, and it's nice to have you back again, Natalie. Uh, we haven't seen you in quite a while. Natalie Bubella um, with Muskoka Algonquin Healthcare. And uh, fitting to have you in the studio about a year after this pandemic uh, started uh, for Canada. And we wanted to kind of review from your point of view what has happened with the hospitals in Muskoka basically since the start of this last March. So let's just thank you for coming in, by the way, and let's just kick right into this. So um, maybe, first of all, you can tell me a bit of your uh, recollection of, of, you know, the events that uh, maybe led up to this point and then also um, having to deal with that from, from that point onwards. Sure. Thank you for having me here today. And it is hard to believe that it's actually been a year since the pandemic uh, was declared by the WHO. And so there's a lot that happened in the hospital over the last year. So it might take me a few minutes just to go through <laughs> some of it, but I, I think your, your listeners would be really interested to hear that. And so uh, obviously the first thing that we did was set up a command center. And those were people with very dedicated roles that were responsible for looking at the directives that were coming uh, into the hospital from uh, Ontario Health and from the province and ensuring that we were abiding by that and, and making all the necessary changes. And that was an exceptionally important team because they really oversaw the, the pandemic response for the hospital. And uh, they've met 73 times since the beginning of the pandemic mm -hmm. uh, to review all those uh, uh, directives. And uh, I think uh, people can understand that sometimes things change daily um, and of course weekly. So they were very important uh, to the hospital. Uh, initially, at the very beginning, in order to uh, ensure that we had adequate capacity and staff to be able to manage a serve, we actually cancelled uh, all surgery except for uh, the uh, urgent and emergent uh, surgeries and procedures. Uh, and eventually, after wave one, some of those were restarted and we're pretty well back up to where we were uh, in the previous year. But initially, we did have to cancel those elective uh, emergency, elective surgeries and, and procedures. Um, and the surge didn't come, so that was great, but nevertheless, uh, we needed to make sure that we were um, ready and able to respond uh, if it was needed. Uh, we initiated screening, and the screening was really related to travel and to symptoms. It wasn't just for people entering the hospital, but for all our staff as well. And that took some coordination, and we needed to hire some additional people to be able to manage that. Um, cleaning and disinfectant, uh, disinfection in the hospital was exceptionally important. So the whole area of infection prevention and control needed to be bolstered and really paid attention to based on the directives that were in the hospital. Um, our isolation needs soared like crazy. And even today we have very significant isolation needs in the hospital, which creates a fair amount of work for the staff. Um, and uh, of course, the usage of uh, personal protective equipment um, as well, the staff were fantastic in helping us open up surge units, so we needed to create additional capacity uh, to be able to manage uh, the load because we weren't sure if we would also be facing some influenza challenges that we normally face at, at this time of year, so we wanted to create that capacity. And that's when physical facilities were really important for us as well because we needed to make some changes in the environment to be able to respond. We you know, put in negative pressure isolation. We created more uh, private rooms in the hospital. With respect to the physical distancing requirements um, as well, we needed to put in barriers and create additional space for visitors and others to be able to uh, safely remain in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Uh, we did restrict visitors for a period of time. We opened it up a bit, and then we had to close them down again um, as uh, within the second wave. Um, and then some of our staff um, were great in terms of changing their schedules of work. So for instance, respiratory therapy started to uh, provide service 24-7, seven days a week. That wasn't the previous pattern uh, or scheduling for that group. And the same thing happened with environmental services very grateful to both of those groups of staff to have changed their schedule and it did impact their own personal lives in order to be able to do that and meet our pandemic needs. Uh, rehab services uh, became virtual. They uh, provided support uh, to many of their patients virtually um, and needed to adapt in that way which is exce was exceptionally important to the hospital and to their patients. 
uh, social work um, went almost on a daily basis to interact with patients uh, just to ensure that they were not being deprived socially and, and, and potentially becoming depressed uh, given the visitor restrictions that we had in the hospital. Very grateful uh, for them to have done that as well and, mm -hmm. and, and looked and identified those patients more at risk. In some situations like diagnostic imaging, we actually had a, uh, have a doubling of staff in order to be able to have one staff member actually operating uh, the di diagnostic imaging machinery, but as well to be with the patient and to ensure you know, infection prevention and control uh, standards were being met and patients were being protected. Uh, as you know, we opened up an assessment center. That was a big deal as well in, in terms of ensuring that we were uh, manning the phone lines and actually meeting the needs of our community. Um, as well, uh, there was a small team of staff that consulted with about nine congregate settings during this period of time around IPAC and um, occupational health and safety needs. In some cases, they actually visited the facilities and others did that work virtually. And I'm really indebted to that team for the work they did. Our clinical educators and our physicians spent a lot of time uh, practicing techniques, uh, things like a protected code blue, um, how the hospital would respond to an aerosolizing, uh, generating medical procedure. Uh, so simulations were done, uh, modeling and staffing was done in the ICU to prepare. Um, so that took some time and, and some leadership, and again, that was fantastic. And our materials management staff were exceptionally busy. And, and so from uh, some stats, I think uh, your readers, your uh, public would be very interested in hearing that we went through 2.8 million pairs of gloves wow. in 2020, 1 million more than the year before. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of our N95 mask usage, uh, we uh, doubled that. Um, and when it came to our surgical mask usage, that increased by 600%. Yes. So significant. So I think uh, in shortages that people were aware of worldwide, our materials management staff did a fantastic job in ensuring that we had the necessary PPE and all the other supplies that we needed as well human resources and I know that this has been out in the public recruited over 110 new hires and that's that's a lot of work with attracting uh, that many new people and some of that was based to the additional staff that we needed to put in place uh, to support the pandemic effort as well as that finance kept um, a track of all the finance for all the uh, expenses that were related to covid to make sure that uh, those were being reported correctly to the ministry and that we were being reimbursed for that and our auxiliary despite them not being in the building still continued to do some fundraising to be able to support our capital pandemic needs and of course both of our foundations and our community were exceptionally generous not only did we get donations of ppe we also got uh, donations of meals for our staff and of course financial donations that were really important to us to be able to um, purchase those capital things that were required to respond to the pandemic I want to highlight the fact that I think each and every member of your team, no matter what they do, from somebody who mm -hmm. yourself works at administration to the nurses and doctors, to even people just sweeping the floors and, yeah. and sanitizing, they all played a massive role in making sure that um, the you know the trains ran on time at the hospital. Right? I mean, that's yeah. that's uh, during a pandemic. That's a hugely overwhelming job. So um, we should recognize each and every staff member at the hospital and outside the hospital all working together yeah. um, to make sure it, it ran properly. So what can we expect moving forward, I guess, for the two hospital sites and, and for MAC as a whole right now? Well, we're, we're the, the command center is going to continue to meet. Mm -hmm. We still have directives coming. We're preparing for a potential uh, third wave. Uh, the numbers are starting to rise slowly, and I'm hopeful that does not mean that a third wave is coming, but clearly uh, we need to maintain vigilance continue to follow um, all the directives that are out there and uh, continue to run a hospital because we're not just responding to a pandemic, we're continuing to do the normal course of business that a hospital is known for. Is there anyone else, Dan Lee, that you feel like you missed that you wanted to say thank you to before uh, we wrap up here? Well, again, just to reiterate, really do want to thank the MAC teams, our physicians, our staff for everything that they've done, the command center, our community for understanding, for being there for us, um, also abiding by uh, the uh, directives from uh, public health. And I do want to thank Public Health Ontario Health, um, our local communities, 
um, Norm Miller for his support, every, everyone. I mean, if it, it takes a team to be able to manage, and I think we've done really well. Fantastic. Well, thank you uh, for because you know you're the captain of the ship and you're making sure that it runs properly. So thank you for keeping your head cool during this very uh, trying year, and we hope that things get a little easier for you guys over at Mac. But uh, we appreciate all the work that you thank do. Thank you. Thank you, and yeah. thank you for taking the time to come in and chat with us today. My pleasure.